before I show you the finished black pearl, I need to ask an important favor of everyone that is watching this particular video. Do me a favor and click the like video. It's a little thumbs up at the bottom of your screen. should be a little bit to the left. What that does is it helps notify other individuals that might have a similar interest. It will prioritize this video on YouTube, and that is a great favor to me. I would greatly appreciate it. It's been a little bit over a year when I first began this project in building the Black Pearl, the golden version. And even though it's a challenge, it was doable. I am not a seasoned shipbuilder. I am becoming more seasoned. And yes, I make a few mistakes here and there, but um, I'm very proud of this ship. Let me give you a brief tour of the ship as she is today. And then after that plays, there'll be some instruction on some of the uh, issues that I came across or some insights into the build. And don't forget, I'll be starting very soon on building my next ship, which will be the Black Pearl, but this is the all scenario version. It's the one with three decks. You can get an idea here. Although I won't make mine black, I'll probably do some sort of a dark stain. Fantastic ship. It is also made by ZHL. And I can't wait to get started. I hope you'll follow along. It is my great honor and privilege to christen the Black Pearl Golden Version. By now you've already seen how I figured out how to make these kind of scary looking sails. So let me show you what I stumbled on when I figured out how to make them. This is where the magic happens. And I discovered this completely by accident. I was considering using this material. What I had was just an old small piece and I took my heat gun on a low setting and I was trying to get the wrinkles out of it. But watch what happens. I found that it's easier to work on the sails on the ship. So here's an example of how I'm going to try and age this using my heat gun. And you want to stay back a ways and just slowly get a feel for it. And I'm still working on it. that's it. I'm pretty happy with that. It looks aged. It looks rough. It does shrink up a little, but I wanted it to. It was dragging down. Now I'll be able to, to uh, tie this rope off. The secret is no more than landscaping fabric. And it's the absolute cheapest. The economy weed control landscaping fabric and for a three foot by 50 foot piece under seven dollars at menards made by yard works and the more you work with it 
the better you'll get. And I could make huge sales with this. So that's my latest breakthrough. As I'm doing the rope work, I'm just going to point out areas where I get confused and then try and work something out. And the first area that I've come to that is confusing to me are these two pulleys here. And it's hard to see, but I believe they're 87 and 88. There's also twins to those over here, and they are 69 and 70. Well, looking over here, I couldn't find any numbers, and then all of a sudden it dawned on me, here they are. They're at the base of the masts, 69 and 70. I'm guessing there should be some sort of a rope tie on those masts. So what I've done is, it, it, because it does show it going to the base of the mast, I have some of these eyelets, and I'm going to put one on each side, tie off to that, and then I will loop some rope around that eyelet like it has excess rope on it. One of the most helpful things that I keep telling myself is to look and work from the inside out. That way you have less hassle with other rope work getting in your way. So I've done a pretty good job. I'm on the back section of the ship. As you can see I've done the two inside tie-offs and they actually go all the way to the top and these Two pulleys. I don't think I've mentioned, but on a viewer's suggestion, I have started coating the rope lines with beeswax. And I just picked this up, I think it was through Amazon. It's just 100% pure beeswax. So it does give the, the rope lines a little more look of, of having its own weight. But after I after I put it on the rope line and after I tie it on the ship, then I take a heat gun and I actually warm up that beeswax. You can actually see it get clearer, I, uh, like the beeswax melts and then absorbs into the string. Obviously, you don't want to overheat it just enough to melt that wax into the rope. So I thought I would, uh, would mention that. I'm anxious to try it on my next ship build. I think I can get the ladders to have a natural um, swag to them, per se. So let me continue on with the rope work. I just wanted to mention that because I don't think I had in the past. I believe I have 99.9% .9 of the rope work done. And uh, it is a massive project, a lot of work, but I find it very rewarding. And even though it's tedious, it can be done. The instructions are very helpful. They're all marked out numerically. Sometimes I have to use the magnifying glass to actually be able to read where they go. And it did work. It worked for me. Sometimes you have to mani manipulate a little bit how you get it through some of the other riggings. But you just do the rigging part that you see and where you have the number. It corresponds to the base of the ship. That worked well for me. I also want to mention the background that I have there is nothing more than a a cardboard uh, placard used for school artwork displays or craft displays. Inexpensive, less than $5 I think at Walmart. You can get various colors. 